Hey there, it's Pastor Tom, your Motor Sage. Let me ask you a question. How many out there know the differences between adult believers' baptism and the sacrament of holy baptism? If doing holy things means anything, I made a bunch of points this week. You see, even though I am a retired minister, I like to go to church. In fact, I went to two churches this past Sunday. But by doing so, I brought on some doubt about both places. This is true for several reasons. First, know that I went because it comforts me to be amongst the family of God. Second, I went so to participate in holy things that were established for holy people people set apart by God. But lastly, and most importantly for this today, I got to worship. I got to tell God amongst his people how much I appreciate his gift of salvation that he accomplished through Christ our Lord. However, I also know that even though I went to church twice this past Sunday, neither worship experience got me any points toward driving through the pearly gates. This is because of the worship experiences. You see, in both places, I think the work that the people did fell far short of what was acceptable. You see that both churches need the Holy Spirit's help and they need to pay attention to the Spirit. In the first church, a neighborhood Lutheran church which popped the clutch on my curiosity, I could go and listen. However, I could not join in the family sense. I could not eat at the table during communion. You see, the branch of Lutheranism to which the church belongs, I consider to be outside the realm of authentic Christian thought. They're what we sometimes call apostate. That's a church that clashes gears with God. Oh, the worship service was good and familiar hymns were sung, but the people adhere to liberal principles that I can't accept. The handout literature they have on the rock on the rack at the entrance of the church told the tale. As I read it, I saw that I disagree with their acceptance of gay clergy and their officiating on marriages for other than heterosexual couples. To me, marriage was and still is established solely for the proper formation of families. I would not like anyone from my family to crank the car up and join that church. The instance made me think of the guy who approached Jesus saying, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do mighty works in your name? And Jesus declared to him, I never knew you. Depart from me, you evil doers. Now the second church I attended that day and went to with my wife had a sanctuary with very friendly down-to-earth people in it. My wife loves going there because they sing lively modern Christian music. Myself, I like to go too. I usually enjoy the messages given by a quite animated preacher. However, because the church is rooted in Calvinism rather than Lutheran theology, I shudder whenever he talks about baptism and Holy Communion. 
this past Sunday, being Pentecostal in background, he promoted Believer's Baptism at an upcoming picnic. Now, Believer's Baptism is done as a person reaches adulthood. Then they testify about their accomplished faith and they're baptized. In fact, they often do testimony with full immersion in a very big pool of water, some in rivers and streams. In some places, they do this baptism over and over and over again. Now, what these people do not realize, however, is that when they do this, they are stealing from God. That's right, stealing from God. They're taking the credit for growth in the faith, the faith which gets them baptized. They're making baptism a work of their own. But baptism is really a divine activity where God participates in the re reality that's represented, a work of human beings it's not. You see, I think the early church had it right. Not only do adults get baptized, but children get baptized too. Yeah, children can have faith, even newly born babies. According to the Bible and the, the Didache, a writing of the first century, baptism is a sacred event done by God through the person administering the deed. God forgives our original sin and brings us as baptized into his kingdom. It's a rebirth done only once. In baptism, you see, we die. We're drowned symbolically in the water and are then we are raised into Christ's purity by the power of the Holy Spirit. I don't think God takes kindly to the stealing of his work. As we steal the work of the Spirit, we say, we're saying basically we're smart enough and old enough to be baptized. That claim is offensive, I think, to the mercy of God and the Father and the sacrifice of Jesus, a beloved Son who went to the cross to save us. Now, Thinking about what I experienced last Sunday, I ask you, what should I do about this lack of proper church participation in my particular area? My answer, I figured out by the power of the Holy Spirit, I'm telling you now, baptism is done to us by God. And I think it's my job to tell you that. May the peace of our God that surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.